Hello and welcome to the Nishwarda Books ABC. Again, we continue profiling the books that changed my life and changed my way of thinking and they inspire me and everything that comes into us. And of course, when it comes to books, everyone knows that I, it's one of my passions and I have hundreds of books and thousands of books and I keep buying more books, all kinds of books. I would say that definitely a book is a great friend, but is as well a great self-analysis. When I read the book, when I get excited about the book, I can actually change my life and change the way I think. And at the moment, in the time of AI, this is probably the most important thing that can actually come out of everything is the way we can push our minds and the way we think. So today I want to highlight a special book ABC to an author that I am a huge fan for over 10 years or 15, I would say, Nick Bolstrom. And Nick Bolson, I interviewed previously on my YouTube podcast series, so you can actually find everything about him. But he's probably the most quoted philosopher researcher in the areas of philosophy and artificial intelligence and the future of humanity. And I will start uh, bearing in mind that Nick Bolson is effectively a philosopher. So I start with a quote from one of the biggest philosophers of all times, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. Another one as well that is important is, is the market of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. So these are two quotes by Aristotle. Okay, so Nick Ballstrom. So Nick Ballstrom has a new book and is definitely one of the biggest minds in the world. And when you look at him, definitely you can find an entire research about all the books and the impact he's been having in the thinking about humanity, future, past, and as well in the way we look at technology, artificial intelligence, and a lot of different things. So when it comes to the books of Nick Bolstrom, I will start by highlighting his new book, Deep Utopia. And Deep, Deep Utopia that is launched in 2024 in May, the title of the book is Deep, Deep Utopia, Life and Meaning in a Soul World. And the, it's a book that touches the narrative around how to create utopia. How can actually you can actually look at finding balance in a world of transformational technology that actually can actually bring a lot of different things. So this is definitely one of the different things. And of course, when you talk about someone like Nick, Nick Ballstrom, we're talking about someone that is a highly regarded philosopher, professor of Oxford, and leading one of the biggest institutes in the world in terms of research, the Future of Humanity Institute. But one of the things he's been doing in all his books is looking at what I would say that part of the common ground is what constitutes to be a human. It's a big question, but it's probably, I think, the, the common denominator in all his work. And of course, his work touches amazing things like i was looking and uh, if i look at some of these different things from the research between language and reality from the different parts of humanity bias and some of these books i'll just highlighted some of them and you'll see it uh, in the background you have anthropic bias from 2002 global catastrophic risks from 2008 human enhancement 2009 Superintelligence Paths, Danger Strategies, 2014, and Deep Utopia, Life and Meaning in a Soul World, Idea Press, 2024. So Superintelligence in particular, it's a book that I think just highlighting, it's one of the most critical books, I would say, that was released ever about artificial intelligence. And it's a book that in a, in a simple way looks at how artificial augmented intelligence, AGI, can actually change the path of humanity and that for the, the subtitled paths dangerous strategies this was done in 2014 10 years ago as we speak now in 2024 and in 2014 talking about this was still a bit of science fiction domain and uh, when you look at this of course this is a book recommended by bill gates and a lot of global personalities is he was talking about we need to be careful about AI, but this was 10 years ago. Now, of course, a lot of the things that the book was highlighting are happening on a day-to-day. -day. So we are in a breakthrough in terms of humanity. And of course, a lot of these topics are more relevant than ever. 
relevant in terms of anthropic bias. So we can actually look at anthropic is about humanity and as well how we can actually look at the challenges of conventional formulations of the anthropic principle and advocates for a more nuanced approach to indexical information across various disciplines, including cosmology, philosophy, and quantum physics. Then, of course, I mentioned about superintelligence. And I think especially in superintelligence, Nick Boltron explores the various pathways to achieving superintelligence, including whole brain emulation and AGI, highlighting the transformative power such entities could wield. And of course, Nick Boltron distinguished between final goals and instrumental goals, arguing that while certain objectives may converge across intelligent agents, the combination of any level of intelligence with diverse final goals could lead to unforeseen consequences. Boston warns of the risks associated with creating a superintelligence AI, emphasizing the global potential for an intelligence explosion and the establishing of a single term, a global decision-making entity that could optimize the world according to its goals. And this, of course, uh, comes with one of the areas that is quite well known, that is the simulation argument. That is a position that looks that the fraction of human level civilizations that reach a post-human stage is very close to zero, and the fraction of post-human civilizations that are interested in running ancestral simulations is very close to zero, and the fraction of all people with our kind of experience that are living in their simulation is very close to one. So that means we can build eventually some kind of simulation machine that can actually put us a bit like, imagine we are managing a colony of ants that we can take out of their, their part and put it in another environment. Humans can do that. Super intelligence can do that. So there's a lot of ethics around this is work, a lot of philosophy, a lot of dimensions. But what I think it's very special is the way it looks at uh, humanity, technology, evolution, and present future. And it looks at mathematics and a lot of different things. For instance, if I look at a book like The Global Catastrophes, that is a book that was created by him and edited as well with Milan Sirkovic. It's a massive amount of work. We're talking about 500 pages. But uh, I will just look at some of the quotes that I think are important, especially to look at this. When I look at humanity and the different parts that we can actually highlight, because effectively everything we're trying to do right now, it's partly described and it's been kind of looking at all the possibilities of taking humanity to a new level but as well to, to find some kind of ways of protecting humanity at the same time. So when you look especially at the vast parallel, I'll just read a bit of discussion and conclusion. By ex in accessing the global risk, a major variable is how long it will take to develop nanotechnology to the point of exponential molecular manufacturing, nanofactories building nanofactories. Opinions may widely vary, but nanotechnologies who have studied molecular manufacturing most closely tend to have the shortest estimates. It appears technically plausible to us that molecular manufacturing might be developed prior to 2020. So that means a lot of the things that are happening in humanity has been actually looking at this from a scientific and perspective. Okay, so to look at this, I just want to highlight especially his new book, which I think it's very important because it's, it's launched as we speak. So I want to start with actually a beautiful quote that is on, on the introduction of the book. That is, so the new book, like I mentioned, Deep Utopia, Life and Meaning in a Solved World. And the book is as well here on my right. So you can actually look at it as a book that looks at utopia in the sense of not looking at dystopia and uh, how we can actually create a transition to the machine intelligence era without making humans obsolete. So I know that this is very philosophical, philosophical, but if you are in looking at some of my interviews, I've been discussing this, I've been interviewing global personalities, and this is really more relevant than ever. And I'll just look and read this preface to the book that I think it's really impressive. Like children opening their eyes to a new day, having gone to the previous nights as stuff of snow began falling, we dashed to the window and lift ourselves to the tips of our toes to behold the landscape transformed, a winter wonderland glittering the possibilities for discovery and play. Even the tree branches before so boringly bare have been changed into something beautiful and magical. 
we feel we are inhabiting a storybook or a game world and we want very much to put on our boots and mittens immediately and run outside to see it, touch it, experience it and to play, play, play. So this is very poetic preface for the new book, Deep Utopia, but as well is what is happening. We have a new world that is all the technology developments and all the playgrounds of artificial intelligence. But of course, we have in the other hand, of course, the global catastrophic human brain that has the capacity to create utopia, capacity to create dystopia. And looking at his work, I think what I love about Nick Bolstrom is that is actually looking at we are in a solve world where human labor became become obsolete due to the advanced AI systems. But at the same time, we have 10 billion people by 2100, and we have a lot of challenges facing humanity, like always in history. The challenge right now is that we have more humans than ever in history, and at the same time, we still have all the beautiful principles of your our old operating systems and our new operating systems of what is to be human. So I want just for you listening to these books, ABC, of course, I will highlight all these books. Please look at the interview I did with Nick Bolstrom. Look at these books. Read as much as you can. If you don't cannot read 500 pages, look at summaries. Look at interviews. He has like thousands of interviews available in YouTube, my own interview and so forth. But learn, keep updating yourself, keep a narrative that is positive. And the narrative that is positive is a narrative that manages the pros and cons of what is being human, all our feelings, all our emotions, all our emotional intelligence, and all our poetry of loving some things versus others. But please, don't be a bot. Try to create this world with positive, but as well with sense of belonging and sense of pushing yourself to be a better person. Of course, this is very humanistic and positive. His work is much more pragmatic, but I think it makes really sense on looking at the complexities of navigating a world where the fundamental changes facing humanity are still there, but they are longer, less and less material and more philosophical, philosophical and spiritual. And I think especially in his new book, there's an exploration of how individuals and societies might grapple with his use of purpose, identity and fulfillment in a world where traditional notions of work, struggle, and mortality are fund fundamentally changed. So I'll finish here. For everyone listening, please, books are a great way to keep your mind active, to find new ways to take you out of depression or to find new ways to solve the problems you're facing. Challenge yourself with a good book. They are available all over. They are in the internet. They are in paper, digital, any format, audibles. I love audiobooks whatever works better for you, but keep reading, keep learning. And I'll finish with a quote by Nick Wallstrom, because I think it's very important that I want for us to think how we can actually look at this. So let's look at this quote that I think it's important for all of us. And I would like you to think about this. Before the prospect of an intelligence explosion, we humans are like small children playing with a bomb. Such is the mismatch between the power of our playing plaything and the immaturity of our conduct. Superintelligence is the challenge for which we are not ready now and will not be ready for a long time. So this is one of these quotes. Now let's look at a bit more poetical and that we can actually look from this. Many of the points made in this book are probably wrong. It is also likely that there are considerations of critical importance that I failed to take into account, thereby invalidating some of all or all of my conclusions. This is another quote from Superintelligence that I think is very interesting for us and as well, a sense of humility that are important for us. Thank you so much for being here, for listening and supporting me and please use this, engage and comment and subscribe and share and please provoke me as well with your thoughts, with the books you love and the difference you have. Thank you so much for being here.